Hey guys, this is Shane. I wanted to share with you a little something that I noticed when I played a festival recently at the Basin Music Festival here in Melbourne, Australia. I've been doing that gig for about seven years now, on and off. It's usually one big festival a year, and then they've got a couple of other ones spaced out during our summer here as well. So we did one of the summer sessions, which was awesome. We got there just after the first band started, and the guitar tones were awesome. So the first band was actually Kevin Buckingham's band, and he's been around Melbourne for a long, long time. Professional, great singer, great guitar player. He owns a lot of great gear. Actually had a chat to him after his set, and I was stunned at the sort of tones that the band had in terms of their guitars. We we're just sitting at the back of the stage, just going, man, this, this sounds unreal. Let's go around to the front and find out what they're playing, because my friend Brian, who you've seen on the channel as well, fantastic guitar player, we're both like, the tones are great, let's go check this out. <laughs> we walk around the front, the guy on the left is playing a PV Bandit, 112, one of the new ones, and the singer guitarist was playing a Boss Katana 50. 50, that was it. And it sounded unbelievable, mic'd up. There was no DI outs or anything like that, just two microphones in front of the amps, and it sounded amazing. Sadly, I didn't get any footage of the band. I really wish I had of. While I don't know Kevin that well, my friend Brian knows him from going back a long, long time. They played a couple of gigs together back in the day or something like that as well. And he basically told us that he's got a lot of high-end gear, but he prefers to use these solid-state amps when he does shows like this because they're easy to carry around. You know, they're light, they're loud, all that kind of good stuff. And it was just a shock to see some real pros using this kind of stuff, which brings me to my next point. I'm not putting myself in that category at all, but I play live a lot and I try to keep my live chops up. Uh, and we went on about two bands after the Kevin Buckingham band. And there was only one tube amp the entire day on stage, which was a Hot Rod 3. What else did we have? We had my PV Bandit 112 and Brian finally took his solid state amp, the PV Studio Pro Silver Stripe Edition, all stock to the gig for the first time to give it a blast. So what I thought I'd do today is show you some live clips from the actual gig. Now what I'm about to show you is the actual off stage sound. So you're not hearing this coming through the front of house, you're hearing it just in front of the stage. The actual front of house speakers are several feet in front of where the video cameras were set up. So you're actually just hearing the amp sound straight off the stage, straight into the camera. I probably should have thought about that when I actually did or placed the cameras, but they were undercover and pretty secure. So I thought, you know what, that'll be fine. But anyway, it seems like solid state amps are kind of taken over and it was funny to see so many bands play in one day and only have one tube amp on the stage. So. I don't know, maybe there's something to be said for that, but it was great also chatting to guys that are huge gear nerds that I hadn't met before, who were starting to come around and sort of saying, you know, like they can get just as great tones out of these as they can out of their high-end amps, and the proof is in the pudding or whatever the, <laughs> the term is. There's, there's no reason why a good guitar player can't get a great sound out of an amp, even if it's solid state, and you're about to hear Brian absolutely rip it up on a few solos, and I might chuck one of mine in there as well. But let me know your thoughts on solid state amps. I'm seeing them more and more at jam nights, at gigs, all kinds of stuff. They're popping up all over the place. I think it's mostly because they're light and loud. Some solid state amps suck, but so do some tube amps as well. Keep that in mind. Let me know your thoughts on the tones. And yeah, take it away, Brian. <laughs>
thanks for watching. My name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions about the gig or the footage or the tones or the amps or anything, please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. One of the things I've noticed over the years, whether I'm producing an album for someone else, for myself, doing blind tests on YouTube or doing gigs, a good play can get a great sound out of anything almost. That said, I also noticed that there's a huge bias towards stuff when people see it. When Brian and I both heard the Kevin Buckingham band play, we were like, man, these guitars are just unbelievable. I really want to find out what they're playing. And it was kind of like, oh, wow, okay. So they're just great players playing a PV, which obviously is a great amp, playing a guitar, which is also a great amp. Did I think they sounded anything but a tube amp off stage? Absolutely not. They sounded fantastic. So that's just some thoughts and some feelings on the topic of tube amps versus solid state amps, I guess. And I'm just seeing them more and more pop up around the traps and it's great to see them used at festivals. I thought to myself, you know what? I just want to be able to plug in and not have to stress about tone. So what amp did I bring? The PV Bandit. It's just a great amp. Anyway, thanks again for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell for future updates and I'll catch you all soon. See ya.